Ever wondered how to solve a 3x3 Rubik's Cube in no time? Welcome to the world where colors intertwine and intellect is tested. The Rubik's Cube, a brain-teasing puzzle, has left many scratching their heads in confusion. It's a mesmerizing labyrinth of vibrant hues that's both captivating and challenging. But fret not, our mission today is to unravel this enigma to provide you an easy-to-follow guide to outsmart the cube. By the end of this video you will have the knowledge to solve a Rubik's Cube quickly and easily. Before diving into the solution, understand the basics of a Rubik's Cube. To truly master the Rubik's Cube, you need to familiarize yourself with its structure. At first glance it may seem like a chaotic mix of colors, but each piece and color has its role in the grand scheme of the cube. Let's break it down. The Rubik's Cube is composed of three types of pieces, the center, the edge, and the corner pieces. The center pieces are the heart of the cube. They are stationary and dictate the color of each side. So, when you're solving remember the centerpieces are your guide. They're your north star, never moving, always reliable. Next up we have the edge pieces. These are the pieces with two colors. They sit between the centers and corners. There are 12 in total, each unique. And they form the bridge between the center and corner pieces. And finally, the corner pieces. These are the ones with three colors. They sit, you guessed it, in the corners. There are eight unique corner pieces, and like the edge pieces, they have a specific spot they need to go. Now let's talk colors. The beauty of the Rubik's Cube is in its simplicity. Six colors, six sides. But the arrangement of these colors is crucial. An incorrectly placed piece can throw off the entire solve. So it's important to always be aware of where each color should be in relation to the others. Each color has an opposite. White is opposite yellow, blue is opposite green, and red is opposite orange. This arrangement never changes and understanding it will help you in your quest to solve the cube. Understanding the cube is like understanding a complex puzzle. Each piece, each color, each move you make has a purpose. It's about more than just twisting and turning. It's about strategy. It's about thinking ahead. It's about patience and precision. Now that you have a basic understanding of the cube, it's time to dive into the solving process. The first step to solving the cube is to form a white cross. This is your foundation, your starting point. It's where the magic begins. It's like the cornerstone of a building, setting the stage for the rest of the structure. So, how do we create this white cross? Well, let's dive right in. Start by focusing on the white centerpiece. This piece is our anchor, and it will remain in place throughout our journey to solve the cube. Now, we need to bring the white edge pieces to this center. Remember, an edge piece has two colors. One of them is white, and the other will be one of the remaining five colors. The trick here is not just to form the white cross, but to do so while matching the second color of the edge pieces with the corresponding center colors. This harmony is crucial for the steps that follow. It's like a symphony where every instrument must play its part perfectly for the music to come together. Imagine, for example, a white and blue edge piece. This piece must align with both the white center and the blue center, forming part of the white cross and simultaneously aligning with the blue center. This principle applies to all four edge pieces required to form the white cross. This step may seem a bit challenging at first, but don't fret. It's like learning to ride a bike. You may wobble, you may fall, but with a little patience and practice, you'll soon be cruising smoothly. And the satisfaction of seeing that white cross form perfectly aligned is absolutely worth the effort. Remember, the Rubik's Cube is not just about quick fingers, it's about understanding the puzzle, recognizing patterns, and devising strategies. It's about taking a seemingly impossible task and breaking it down into manageable steps and forming the white cross is the first of these steps. Once you have the white cross, you're ready for the next step. You've laid the groundwork, and now you're ready to build upon it. The adventure of solving the Rubik's Cube has just begun. Now move on to the first layer. To solve the first layer of the Rubik's Cube, it's all about positioning the corner pieces correctly. You want to create a solid uniform color on one face of the cube, with the edges matching the center colors of the surrounding faces. Start by identifying the corners on the top layer that need to be moved. These are the corner pieces with two colors that match the centers of the top layer and one adjacent face. Remember, the center pieces are your guiding stars. They never move, so use them to determine where each piece should go. Once you've found a corner piece to move, rotate it to the bottom layer. Now, you're going to use a simple algorithm to move it back up to the top layer, but in the correct position. The algorithm is right inverted, down inverted, right down. Apply this algorithm until the corner piece is in the right place and oriented correctly. Repeat this process with the remaining corner pieces until the first layer is complete. 
It's like putting together a jigsaw puzzle, one piece at a time. You might have to repeat the algorithm a few times, but don't worry. Practice makes perfect. Remember, patience is key. Solving a Rubik's Cube isn't just about speed, it's about precision and strategy. With the first layer complete, you're halfway there. Next, solve the second layer. Now that you've mastered the first layer, it's time to take on the second. This layer is all about positioning the edge pieces correctly. Let's break it down. Firstly, identify the edge pieces that belong in the second layer. These pieces have two colors on them. One color matches the center color of the second layer, and the other color matches the center color of one of the adjacent sides. Next, move these edge pieces to the top layer. This might sound counterintuitive, but trust me, it's a necessary step. We'll use a maneuver called the up, right, down sequence to position these pieces correctly. Here's how it works. Turn the top layer so the edge piece you want to move is directly above its final position. Then perform the up, right, down sequence. That's turning the right side up, the top side to the right, and the right side down. If done correctly, the edge piece should now be in its correct position on the second layer. Repeat this process for each of the four edge pieces in the second layer. Remember, patience is key. It might take some trial and error to get the hang of this, but don't give up. You're well on your way to becoming a cube-solving master. Congratulations, you've solved two out of three layers. Finally, solve the last layer. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. After conquering the first two layers, we now stand at the precipice of the final challenge, the last layer of our 3x3 Rubik's Cube. Let's break this down. The final layer is about positioning and orienting the remaining pieces correctly. It's a two-step process. First, we create a yellow cross on the top, and then we shuffle the corners into their rightful place. Get ready to dive into the first step. We're going to form a cross on the top layer. You might see a dot, an L shape, a bar, or the cross itself. Each of these formations is a step closer to forming the cross. If you get the dot, don't sweat it. It simply means you're a couple of moves away from the L shape, which then leads to the bar, and finally, to the cross. Remember, it's all about patience and perseverance. Now let's move on to the second step. We're going to position the corners. This might seem daunting, but let's take a breath and tackle it methodically. We'll rotate the top layer until at least two corners are in the correct position. They may not be oriented correctly yet, but that's okay. We're focusing on getting them in the right spot for now. Once you've got two corners in the right position, it's time to bring the rest of the corners home. You'll perform a specific move sequence, which will shuffle the corners without disturbing the cross. It might take a few repetitions, but soon enough, all corners will be in their correct positions. Finally, we orient the corners. This is the final stretch. You'll perform another sequence of moves to twist each corner piece without messing up the positions we've worked so hard to set. And just like that, you'll see your cube morphing into its solved state. And there you have it, a solved Rubik's Cube. With a little bit of practice, you'll be able to solve the final layer and the entire cube in no time. Remember, every master was once a beginner, so keep practicing, keep solving, and most importantly, keep having fun. Solving a Rubik's Cube may seem daunting at first, but just like a master pianist hitting those high notes, or a seasoned chef perfectly searing a steak, it's all about practice. Don't be disheartened if you don't get it right away. It's perfectly okay to take time to master this process. The cube isn't going anywhere, and each twist and turn you make is a step closer to solving the puzzle. Remember, the key to solving a Rubik's Cube quickly and easily is practice. Happy cubing!